How would you like to improve your health and keep your family safe? You're listening to the Healthy Home Hacks Podcast, where we firmly believe enjoying optimal health shouldn't be a luxury. Healthy Home Authorities and husband and wife team, Ron and Lisa, will help you create a home environment that will level up your health. It's time to hear from the experts. Listen in on honest conversations and gain the best tips and advice. If you're ready to dive in and improve your well being and increase your energy, you're in the right place. All right, here are your hosts bow biologists, authors, media darlings, vicarious vegans, and avocado aficionados, Ron and Lisa Barris. This episode of Healthy Home Hacks is brought to you by Airs Tech. Are you worried about electromagnetic fields in your environment? Do you want to rest easier knowing that you're protecting yourself and your family from dangerous radiation emitted from wireless devices in and around your home and office? Try Lifetune products made by Aristech. Peer reviewed and backed by science, Aristech patented EMF modulation technology keeps you connected without the negative biological effects. Equip your phone, laptop, home, and even your pet with their easy to use solutions. Coexist with technology and visit Airs Tech, that's A I R E S Tech.com to learn more and use code RL30 off, that's RL30 off, to save 30% of your entire purchase. We said it before and we'll say it again. Your skin is your largest organ, and up to 60% of what goes on it can get absorbed into the body. Which brings us to today's show, the safety of the skincare brands we blindly trust. Turns out the personal care products you use matter a lot. Have you made the switch to completely non-toxic makeup and skincare? If you're like most people, it can feel overwhelming and you may not know who to trust or where to start. And with good reason. Turns out our very own FDA does not require cosmetic products and ingredients to have FDA approval before they go into the market. So if you've thought about the products you purchase and often pay premium dollars for, are vetted by the government for safety before they hit your favorite drugstore, department store, or online shop, think again. Truth bomb. You know, most skin products actually do contain ingredients that are known carcinogens. Just to put things in perspective, the European Union bans 14,000 ingredients in skincare. The US only bans 14. And it's not just chemicals and cosmetics, it's allergens too. Today, more than 3 million people in the US have celiac disease. More than 8 million have psoriasis. 31.6 million have some form of eczema and over 50 million suffer from allergies. Hold on to your toxic tubes and stay with us guys, because we're gonna show you how to ensure the safety of the beauty brands you buy. Our guest today, Dr. Leah Ramachandra, is the founder and CEO of Epilinks. She has a doctorate in pharmacy and is a scientist with over 30 years of pharmaceutical medicine development experience. Epilinks by Dr. Leah was born from her own struggle with a gluten allergy, psoriasis, and arthritis. Realizing that she wasn't alone, a former executive at one of the top pharmaceutical companies in the world, Dr. Leah found herself sick. She was losing her lifelong battle with psoriasis. Her blood pressure was skyrocketing and she had been diagnosed with preeclampsia. Not being able to find skincare products that could guarantee being allergen and gluten free, she decided to create her own products to help patients and people struggling with autoimmune diseases and allergies. Her goal? To develop gluten free, allergen free, vegan and clean skincare that would be the best on the market. And she is here with us today. Dr. Leah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Wow, what an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Dr. Leah. We're so excited to have you, a fellow Southern Californian. So this is great. And I know our listeners are just ready to learn so much today about skincare. So I want to just get started. 
As we said at the top of the show, the FDC has very scarce regulations on cosmetic products. Why is this? And why is it up to consumers to take on the responsibility of ensuring their own cosmetic products are safe? I mean, this seems a little, no, this seems a lot backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. And that's actually a very good question. That's the question I'm always asking myself. Why is that, right? So I don't have an answer why. I think really FDA and FDC needs to have much more stringent regulation. You're absolutely right. And FDC, which is a Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act, only requires that you have an appropriate labeling, right? So labeling yeah. means that ingredients are there, weight is there, what's inside, the name, and where it is made. But mm -hmm. obviously nothing is vetted. Ingredients mm -hmm. are not vetted. And whether it is true or not is also not vetted. So you can also submit all your ingredients and your products to FDC. Oh, wow. You mm -hmm. can submit it, but you will not get an approval. Basically, they say, okay, thanks for submitting. Okay, so you can put together your list of ingredients and that doesn't even have to be accurate, you're saying? Correct. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's like wow. Alice in Wonderland. Crazy. It is. Wow. Yes. I didn't know that. <laughs> We've talked about this on the show before with when it comes to so many different categories, whether it be food or whether it be household cleaning products or personal care, that we really have to rely on these third-party certifications nowadays, right? Because if the FDA isn't doing the safety testing and they're not even vetting whether you say what's in there is accurate, who do we trust? I mean, we have to actually go to brands that we know and trust, but a lot of consumers don't know. They literally don't know. So this is a huge, huge problem. We obviously have so much illness in the world today. We talked about the allergy issues, but obviously we've got cancer and respiratory issues and reproductive problems and so many ailments that this is a huge problem. And I really hope guys, if you're listening, that you stay till the end, because we're really going to dive in. Dr. Lee is going to show you what to avoid, what to buy, how to vet these products, because we can't rely on these government agencies anymore, sadly. That's a great point, Lisa. You know, Dr. Lee, I for example, how does EpiLinks use this philosophy when formulating products? Well, for us, or especially for me, I would say maybe it is easier or it was easier maybe for others since I've spent my you know, entire previous life <laughs> in the pharmaceutical industry, which is highly, highly, highly regulated, as we all know. Yes. And obviously, FDA does regulate it, and FDA regulates pharmaceutical industry and the medicines that are put on the market even more than EMA, which is the European agency, which is right. interesting, right? Yeah. So we're safe with medicines, but not with beauty and skincare. So when I started this and I saw that there's not much regulation, and also many brands claim things that they should never claim, and the ingredients that are put in some products are just really not good for you. I decided that it was my knowledge with the allergies and autoimmune conditions that I have. And being a pharmacist, I should formulate all the products myself and only put ingredients in those products that really would interact with the cells on our skin. And if they are absorbed into the body, they won't do much harm. Of course, you know, everything can do harm, but at least we know that they will be as safe as possible. And then my husband, who is the co-founder, he's an immune oncologist. So we always talk about ingredients and what they do to our skin and also to people who have various conditions, like you mentioned, cancer, or when we grow older, you know, we, <laughs> all kinds of things come up. It's hard enough battling wrinkles and drippiness. Yes. We, don't need, <laughs> like yes. we don't need to be adding more problems through the products. It's crazy. Well, you guys are a power couple, by the way. I read your bio on your website and very impressive that you're both he's an immunologist he's an immune oncologist so he's a he's immune a physician he's a doctor and then he has a phd in immunology so we can always yeah that's a powerhouse right there i <laughs> that is. Yeah, nice uh, dinner conversation. <laughs> <laughs> do you talk about work the whole time? That's what we do. <laughs> what our conversations you know, probably aren't as intellectual as yours, but um. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Well, no wonder the ingredients you have are free of gluten, dairy, nuts. Can you get into that a little bit too? Because there's like fourteen and fourteen. Yeah. What are the allergens that you don't use? Yeah, you know, and let's start. I think. In the last 10 years, we've seen the beauty switch from wild, wild west to really more 
regulated by the beauty industry itself because no one else does it, right? So yeah. we really start talking about clean beauty. We still don't know what that is, but still like non-toxic. So many companies are switching to chemically cleaner ingredients, right? So we said, okay, let's build on that. Chemically clean is great, but we really need to think about also being medically clean, you know, and medically yeah. clean for me means, uh, for us, means it really also free of products that can give you any kind of rash, especially mm-hmm. if you have any autoimmune or skin conditions, any other allergies, especially if you have allergies. So for, for us, that was medically clean. So Mm-hmm. no toxic ingredients chemical ingredients and also mm-hmm. allergens and we talk about autoimmune conditions such as psoriasis celiac right which is mm-hmm. a big one yeah asthma, and then you have many others yeah and of course there with celiac especially even small digestion of gluten can be mm-hmm. very problematic for a person with celiac disease and right. people always tell me we have about gluten who cares it doesn't pass your skin barrier i said yeah but we eat our lipstick. We put right. our lipstick yeah. on it. That's right. And yeah. we eat it the whole day long. So, yes. so what's the stat again? Like how much lipstick is eaten by a woman per year? Wasn't there something crazy? <laughs> a like, like Yeah, was that a tube? Urban legend. Or like nine tube. pounds in your life? Something crazy. I remember hearing that a while back. Whatever's right? not on your glass is going in your room. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm sure. Yeah. So the medically clean term, did you guys come up with that? Or is that actually? Yes. Okay, yes. medically we- clean. I like that. And it's interesting because it's like a, a vicious cycle because people, like I know in college, I had really bad acne that happened out of nowhere. I was using a department store brand that was really popular at the time. And the more I used it, the worse my face was getting. And I kept thinking, I need to use more. I need to use more. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. And it was creating the problem. And it wasn't until I finally ditched that brand that was pricey too for a college student. It was a department store brand. And it literally was causing the problem. So I think you must see that a lot where people are self-perpetuating. They don't realize that the product they're trusting is probably the root of the issue. Yes, yes, correct. I have, we have a lot of actually customers who either have acne or their kids have, you know, because it's kind of, it can be early, but it also can come later in life. Yeah. Or can like recur later in life. And they also say, I use this $200 product Mm -hmm. And my skin is still dry and my skin oily. And it's like, I have still this rash or rosacea or acne coming up. Yeah. And it is because of all the additives that Mm -hmm. I always say, talking about ingredients, if you see more than 20, 30 ingredients, 20, I would say, don't buy it because you don't. Oh, good tip. No more than 20. Yeah. Yeah. Because everything else is to make the product light better, smell better, feel yeah. better. It's all the silicones, all these additives, weed yeah. that make it look and feel better, but is not good for your skin. Right. So do you think that's the main reason why these non-clean ingredients are put into other people's brands? You know, what is it to save money? Is it just to make it seem like it's better? Preservatives. What's... It's all of it. Yeah. I smell think good. It, yeah. I okay. think like we don't use any fragrances because we know... I would say if you don't have celiac or you you don't have any other allergies, you know, just eliminate all the products with fragrances, with any perfumes, because that's, these are the chemicals and usually a mixture of chemicals that gives you that allergic reaction and redness. Yeah. But what do we do when we look at the cream? We open the cream and we smell it. Smell it. it. Yeah. It smells good. It must be good. No, it's not good. Right. So, yeah. Same with candles. I mean, people, that's the first thing they do. You can't walk into a candle store and everyone's not sniffing the candles, but those are synthetic fragrances unless they're essential oils, which most of them aren't because essential oils are expensive. So I think, like you said, getting used to paying more for quality products, you know, not that you have to, people are paying a lot for junky products. So you may as well be paying for quality products and that takes knowledge. Yeah, and you know Sorry for interruption. I don't even think like when we started this and many people come to me and say, oh, I was buying this brand I won't mention. It was $1,000. I know it's yeah. crazy. And now yeah. buy yours and it's 60. Why is it? What's wrong with it? And I'm like, well, oh, that's yeah. It. It's just we don't have that markup because I feel that medically clean beauty needs to be accessible to everyone. Yeah. And it you really don't need to pay more for like a clean beauty, you don't, you know? Yeah. And that's why I always say, like you said, it's preservatives, it's fragrances, it's all these fillers. 
it's parabens, you know, yeah. so it's, it is to preserve it longer, to make it look nicer, but obviously not need it at all. Yeah. Mm. Like the phthalates even can keep the fragrance lingering, right? And speaking of phthalates, share with our listeners some ingredients that they must avoid when shopping for makeup or skincare. Give us like a few big no-nos. Right. So fragrances or perfumes, and even sometimes when you see oils, you know, even natural mm-hmm. oils, there are some good natural oils and some that are not that will, like some oils that are used for massage, you know, they mm-hmm. also sometimes give redness and yeah. uh, allergic reaction. They are also used in some of the of the products or so fragrances. For synthetic fragrances, right? But synthetic fragrances. But all it has to say, and listeners, we've talked about this in past podcasts, but all it has to say is fragrance or parfum. That one word can hide hundreds of chemicals that are concocted for that fragrance. So it looks like this simple little innocent ingredient but that can be really, really toxic. And that's not the same as natural fragrance. Correct. So, yeah, so natural act like we use ligand berry extract or raspberry okay. extract. It still smells great. Yeah. But usually you would not have a reaction. Okay. Yeah, phthalates is definitely a no-no for me, even though FDA is not outspoken about it. They still say more research is needed. As usual. Yeah, it's like, oh, uh, <laughs> like how much? I know. <laughs> <laughs> how much research? Yes, so phthalates. Parabens, even though I do speak with a lot of dermatologists who swear by parabens, they say, in one sense, if you have mascara, right, and you don't have any preservatives in that mascara, and you use it all over on your eyelashes, so you take it out, it can get contaminated, and then you can have an infection in your eyes, which mm-hmm. is bad. So they mm-hmm. say parabens, use of parabens is not good, but it's better than not having any preservatives. Mm-hmm. But there are worse parabens and better parabens. So- right, yeah. Let's talk about some of those, because I think some people, you know, it's confusing to look at the label and know what to look for. So parabens, there are types of parabens, right? Like methyl parabens. parabens. Yeah. And people can look up because some of them are completely banned in Europe or Japan. Right. Well, that's probably a good rule of thumb if it's banned in Europe. Well, you get that's 14,000 chemicals, okay, right? Well, 14, we said, right, well. as we said at the top, 14,000 <laughs> that we still allow. No, we don't allow 14. That's right. <laughs> so. yeah. That's crazy. And it doesn't even, you know, still... Even if it's banned in Europe, like I grew up in Europe and have used all kind of French skincare and paid so much, thousands of dollars, and I still got rash on my face and I yeah. still got <laughs> allergies, right? So again, the fillers are still there, like silicones and everything else. That's yeah. not banned. So yes, fragrances, phthalates, parabens, and another big one, which especially with the summer is coming, and I think it's been also a lot in the news, is the chemical sunscreens. Mm-hmm. Mm. chemical ingredient in the sunscreen mm-hmm. and even FDA came out a few months ago saying that before they said everything is relatively safe now they're saying we only deem natural or mineral sunscreen ingredients such as zinc oxide and titanium dioxide as safe yeah. all the chemical ingredients more research is needed <laughs> <laughs> yeah now that we've had oh you know we have a blog post on our website on this six sunscreen shockers yes. and it's crazy what's in the sun there's literally ingredients in some sunscreens that actually enhance cancer causing chemicals to Correct. penetrate right Correct. so there was a consumer report they rated all these sunscreens and they rated all the name brands all the really toxic brands the highest and because the study only looked at the efficacy of does it keep you from a sunburn? It had nothing to do with Mm. toxicity. And so I had written an article to educating consumers, hey, yeah, maybe you don't get a sunburn, but what about all the health effects of these other chemicals in there? How can you give that high rating when these are linked to cancer and all kinds of issues and not just in the short term, not just short term, but these long-term issues that you might not know in 15 years if you get a cancer diagnosis, was it from that sunscreen you used every day? You like, it's hard to connect these dots with these yeah. chemicals for people. So it's easy to say out of sight, out of mind. Oh, you know, I use it and I'm fine. Right. You hear that all the time. I'm fine. Well, let's check back 15 years and see what all these toxic chemicals are doing. So it's always better to err on the side of caution, right? The precautionary principle. 
For and sure. Ron and I use mineral sunscreen ourselves. I mean, it is a little cakey. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> it like, does it. You've got to use some elbow grease to get it rubbed in. It is going to do that. I haven't found like a brand. frosted a snowman for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. but you just have to rub it in and you'll get it in there. I mean, that's the only drawback. But, you know, there's so many great brands now that make really good yeah, mineral. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I would suggest like I use on my kids sunscreen with only zinc oxide SPF 50. And it's very hard to get zinc oxide in the cream, <laughs> right? So that's yeah. why it's so flaky and white. And yeah. They look like a ghost when they go yeah. to Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but, you know, I always suggest if you go to, like, we make sunblocks that um SPF 30 and tinted, like slightly. Yeah, tinted. I have a oh. tinted makeup, a mineral tinted makeup. I yes, love it. Yeah. yeah. So then it, you don't see the whiteness. Yeah. It's still slightly tinted and mm -hmm. it's not as cakey. You just need to reapply. So I just reapply every few hours, especially when I go out. But I'm so happy that I meet someone who is knowledgeable because it's always hard <laughs> to explain. Like sunblock is mineral. It sits on your skin, reflects the light, doesn't go, doesn't penetrate your skin sunscreen. And we use it always wrong. Goes inside your skin, chemical ingredients, reacts with the UV rays, right? And, yeah. and, and, makes, and becomes heat, but it still goes inside your skin. So sunblock versus sunscreen. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. That's but really the challenge important. is we, we need some sun, right? So how do you get by that? You need, what, 15 minutes of sunlight a day? Vitamin D. Yeah, so, you know, with even the, I think SPF 30 covers you 97%, SPF 70, oh, 99%, I see. you know? Okay. So that difference is so small. Mm -hmm. And you still get sun coming in. Okay, yeah. okay. You get your sun for your mental health through your eyes, you know? And then, of course, for your skin as well. So you still make vitamin D in your body. So it's not like, so yeah, sun yeah. is good. I said, go and be in the sun. Just yeah. walk along and put SPF. So put SPF. And also, like if you're putting sunscreen just on your, say your face and your arms, I mean, obviously your legs are, and you're out on a hike yeah. or a walk, your legs are still getting this, right? Yes. I mean, other parts of your body. So, I mean, I don't think most people are covering head to toe. It's just time consuming. <laughs> It's, it's like longer than being at the beach to put it on, right? Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> and the SPFs, they're really based, aren't they, on the time they last and not the strength? Is that right? Or do I have that backwards? Yeah, so it's uh, both. It's also okay, like okay. it's the time and the strength. Yeah. Okay. But we think that SPF 90 is better than SPF 30. Uh -huh. And it's not, you know. Oh, it's so it's tiny. You're saying the increments. Up. Oh, okay. Yeah. And with the higher SPF, you know, last year we went crazy with all the sprays because they are so easy. Yeah. But they contain nanoparticles. Yeah. That uh. smog your skin. So if you have yeah. acne or anything yeah. like that. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, it clogs yeah. your skin and then yeah. you'll be fine against the sun. But then you will, number one, you'll have all these molecules absorbed into your body and then also probably allergies all over you all over yeah, you yeah that's a really good point the nanoparticles now do they i guess they don't really have to tell you if they use nanoparticles because it doesn't sound like there's any legal ramifications if they use nanoparticles do they have to reveal that i don't think so i don't think they have to reveal it yeah i, think, I was wondering because that's a yeah. tricky one to find out i mean who's going to yeah. yell at them themselves since they're self-policing <laughs> Yes, they yes. find themselves. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's crazy. So I said like the nanoparticles and we talked about some of the negative effects. What are other negative effects that these harmful chemicals in cosmetics, what can they have on our health? What are some other ones? Because I'm hearing nanoparticles right now. And what does that mean? We don't want to breathe it in. It goes into the pores of your skin. What's the ramification of some of these toxic ingredients? And what else should we look for outside of nanoparticles? Right. Well, I think we all want to eat healthy, right? We all said, okay, we're going to be this. So we're going to do keto. We're going to be vegan. So we all want to live longer. We want to eat healthy. We want to not pollute our bodies and mind, right? And I always say that skincare or beauty always follows the diets and the kind of lifestyle. And we always think we put it on our skin, it won't get absorbed. So ramification to your point is that it will get absorbed, maybe in a smaller dose than if you eat it, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you won't eat phenoxyethanol, right? You won't eat yeah. those preservatives usually. No. Right. You're not going to order a plate of phthalates. <laughs> <laughs> I know, a plate of phthalates. But you do put it on your skin and it gets absorbed in your body. So then even small concentration like we were talking cancer, fertility, autoimmune conditions. There are crazy, crazy list of conditions 
and even talk about early puberty in, in kids. We now more and more research is coming out saying it's because we warm up everything in plastic containers. Sally, it's mm-hmm. leaking our food, right? Mm-hmm. We use sunscreen. We use skincare for the kids or like mm-hmm. teens. And all of parabens, phthalates are endocrine disruptors. We know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it does change our hormonal levels. Yeah. And for listeners, we talk about endocrine disrupting chemicals a lot. But if you're new to the show or just tuning in, these are hormone disrupting chemicals, endocrine disrupting chemicals that generally, right, Dr. Leah, they mimic estrogen in our body. So they're xenoestrogens and they basically, our body mistakes them for actual hormones. And then we end up with this surplus of hormones and typically can lead to estrogen dominance and all kinds of reproductive issues and fertility and all these kinds of pre perimenopause and menopausal symptoms and all of this. And it's so prevalent now in our society, these types of issues, but a lot of people don't connect the dots to what they're putting on their skin. And of course we get that in our food too, right? We get some of that in our food, but a lot of people don't connect the dot to their skincare linked to their hormonal issues. That was a big issue for me when I got sick from, I say my home, but it was really my lifestyle. I mean, I was using traditional conventional skincare and I had to get rid of everything and change to like completely clean living, which is my, you know, our business now teaching others to do that because I had hormonal habit as so many do. And they just go in a perpetual cycle of not knowing how to fix that. So I think it's a really important part of skincare is the endocrine disrupting chemicals. Yeah. And speaking of one PFAS per floral alkyl substances, which everybody knows from nonstick cookware, they're also called the forever chemical. And we did episode 33 on that. But they're a large family of fluorinated chemicals, and they've been linked to cancer, reproductive harm, immune system damage, and other serious health problems. And they are found in cosmetics and personal care products too, not just nonstick and stain grease and water-resistant products. Do you want to shed any light on that? Definitely, yes. So I think you guys follow the news, but last year, right, they did some analysis. They found quite a lot of PFAS in various beauty products, shampoos, conditioners, et cetera. And like you said, they are forever chemicals, meaning that they do not break down. They will forever be stored. We also did a lecture on this. They stored in your body and specific organs like liver and kidney, Mm. and they don't go away and they just Mm. accumulate. And that's, again, it's coming from, I don't think anyone puts them in there specifically on purpose, but they leak from like the cleaning solutions, right? When you clean your machinery before you make skincare, they... Right. You know, I wondered about that because like, you know, the whole idea of PFAS was for the nonstick, obviously cookware, right? It's almost the opposite concept because you want it to stick on your face for your skin, or at least it's on the makeup. So I was like, why is that in there? Why, you know, what's, so it's really the machinery and the, the process yeah. that cause the PFAS to get inside these skincare products, right? Yeah, it could be also contaminated water. Obviously, they didn't okay. do research how they came in. So it's only mm-hmm. like speculating, of course. Mm-hmm. But yes, there was quite a lot of it in there. And some people say, well, who cares? It's also now water system. It's, it's everywhere. So we get it anyhow. But, who are these uh, people? Who I are know, these people? <laughs> <laughs> but then I say, you well, listen to the stuff. I know, exactly. But then I say, well, you need to care. If you can eliminate at least even parts of it, then you should. It's like with last year, this whole benzene contamination, right? Yeah, in the sunscreen, right? And that was in the sunscreen, yeah. Yes, it was in sunscreen. And later in the year, Valor sure, it's independent. And like you were saying, who is taking care of us? And unfortunately, yeah, we need to look at all this certifications or independent labs like Valor sure, And I was also connecting with them who just do random analysis of different products. And then mm-hmm. they found benzene and like you said, very prominent brands. Mm-hmm. Yes, major, every major, major ma- brand. brand. Yeah. And you know, they recalled it, but I mean, I found some of it in my bag that I was using on the kids before. I, oh, I, I, wow. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you even as a doctor are uh, prey to a little trusting, right? You yes. Know? Oh yeah. You yeah. think, oh, it's a great brand. Yeah. It it's been cash. around for a long time, yes. right? Because we won't name names. You can look up the article. I, maybe yes. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. But, you know, it's every name brand that you can think of. These are brands that have been around for decades that are trusted. Heck, they say it on their commercial, you know. And so just because they're older, just because they're big, doesn't mean that they're not 
using, you know, toxic ingredients. And in fact, most of them really are. I find that it's the smaller boutique companies that really go above and beyond that are really making the difference and actually influencing the bigger companies. Let's be honest, the little companies are paving the way. So I'm a big believer in shop small, support your local businesses, support the small companies, because they're the ones that are actually, you know, they've got your health in mind typically, and they are influencing the larger manufacturers to say, hey, you know, people are now smart and they're demanding this. I guess we better change our formulations too. So that's a good thing. I agree. I agree. And also, you know, when I look at our customers and who come to us and say, I have such severe nut allergy that I cannot have any like almond oils or anything with nut oil in my, oh, yeah. my skincare, or like we were talking about wheat or gluten, large manufacturers, because they make so much of so many SKUs, right? Of so many products, they cannot guarantee that it won't be contaminated with one right. of those allergens or one. Yeah. Of, so you're right. Smaller companies usually focus on I'm vegan or I'm this mm-hmm. or I'm that. And of course, I always say to my customers who go and ask me about some other companies, I say, write to them and ask questions. Mm-hmm. You're asking me about what is this ingredient? If they answer and they gain your trust, you buy, you know? Yeah, that's a good, yeah, yeah that's I a great rule of Yeah, they should be able to answer you and they should have that personalized service. Otherwise, why would you trust? Why would you trust them? Yeah, I think that's great. And also like transparency, ingredient transparency is obviously coming to the forefront. It's still not perfect as we know, but at least a lot of the big companies are paving the way with that too. Well, actually now by law, they have to, right? They have to actually list their ingredients at least on their website, which is what a lot of them are doing. So you can go to the website and get the ingredients If you can't find the ingredients on the label, that's questionable to me because it does feel like they have something to hide. Unless, like you said, it's so many ingredients, they can't fit it. (laughs) And then that's another That that breaks the over 20 rule that we just like. (laughs) Yeah, and you know, just to talk about ingredients, sometimes it's when people ask me like, oh, do you think there's gluten in here? It's not, well, I'm just going back to gluten because maybe it's easier. Sometimes it's a derivative of a derivative that had gluten. Mm. And it's oh gluten. yeah, yeah. But in the ingredient, you don't necessarily see the word wheat. You right. know, yeah. it's still a corn, right? Or yeah. any of the nut oils. So I feel that, uh, or like red wine. I was just talking with somebody. It was a company. It's a magazine. We're talking about red wine. I said, well, red wine is always gluten free, right? I mean, it's distilled alcohol. And they said, well, all this where they store the wine. Breaking our heart here, which is <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, you know, they use the glue, like if they store it is in a stainless steel thing, oh, yeah. then it's fine. But if it's in those French oak, uh-huh. they usually use to kind of glue oh, the, the glue. Together. The glues have glue. Yeah. So it's like celiacs, it, it goes oh, wow. a very small concentration. You can't even like probably detect it, yeah. but they feel it. They oh, feel they it. feel it. Celiac, yeah. So, if, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Celiac, I've heard that too. You can't cheat. You can't have any, you got to go (laughs) cold turkey. That's interesting. Wine too. I know we're going on a tangent here, but I did an article on all the labels for wine and what they mean. Clean wine, vegan wine, sustainable, biodynamic, you know, all of that vegan and uh, we're vegan. And I was like, vegan wine, it's a thing. What the heck is vegan wine? It has to do with the filtration process of the wine. And they use, there's a name for it, but it's fish eggs. One of them uses fish eggs. So there's a lot of weird, <laughs> there's so many oh weird God. things. Like, so if you're really <laughs> vegan, <laughs> I don't, there's, there's a name for it. I can't, something glass, they call it something glass, but it's actually fish eggs. It's so weird. So, you know, if you're really die hard, you don't want that wine unless it's actually vegan or biodynamic wine, I think is vegan anyway, but. That's a whole nother crazy concept. There's so many labels to wine. People have no idea. They're just like, oh, grab my wine. And they have no idea. There's sulfates and allergens and pesticides if it's not organic and all of these things can be in there too. Anyways, I wanted to talk because you were talking about the mascara and it made me think of your line is cruelty-free, which I love. It brought up the horrible, you know, monkey testing and things that these poor animals undergo with eye makeup and things like that. Can you tell us a little on why you decided to make your line cruelty-free and why that's important for people to support? Well, you know, for me, and we are also vegan as well. We started oh. as like, as just gluten, then allergens, and then we became, and Yay! cruelty always yeah. vegan. Yes, definitely. Because we have a lot of vegan customers as well who just want a healthier life. 
and have allergies and have other stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it was a no brainer for me, to be honest. Like when I start doing this, I'm like, this is not, and I don't support this, but it's like some of the cancer medicine, you maybe think, okay, you need to do some research. But I was saying, we know the ingredients, we know how they work. There's no need to ever test on animals. And now with all our technologies that we have now and in this century, there are so many other different tests that we can do. There are, you know, in vitro tests, there are tests that just with the simple HPLC method that you can do, you can identify different allergens. You can also test like patch tests to see if there's any redness or not. There's no need anymore ever any country mm-hmm. in the world, wow. universe, mm-hmm. to ever, ever, ever test on animals. So that's cruelty free. Mm-hmm. And I have my dog here. Amen. With- Amen to that. Yeah, good Thanks for yeah. that. Yeah. No, thank you. Exactly. Thank you for doing that and being a part of that movement. Because I think, you know, everybody loves their dog. Everybody loves their cat. But we don't think about all these animals. They all have feelings. They have families. They oh, yes. they matter. They should not be in labs. They should not be undergoing painful horrible experiments. It's heart wrenching. And until you've actually seen it, and if you brave going to the PETA videos and watching them, it will change your life. You will never want to promote brands that test on animals. You really won't. It's so inhumane. And like you said, it feels so archaic at this point, right? Yeah. For sure. Talking yeah. about PETA, actually, it's good you mentioned. I always advise people who want to become vegan or hardcore vegan and want really their skincare to be fully vegan to go on PETA website and they have a list of ingredients mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. not vegan. And of course, you know it. And many ingredients, even colors, like red color. Mm-hmm. Is uh, you know, right? Yes. <laughs> non-vegan. So there are now, now some synthetic methods. But many people don't know that. Oh, there are well, some well, tell me- us again, what is the red color made from? Do you know offhand? I do. It's carmine. Carmine. Yeah. Carmine. What is it made for? Oh, Crushed my- beetles. Yes, yes. Beetle. So yeah. these are beetles. It's, yes, yes. <laughs> uh-huh. It's the blood, right? And there's um, we had someone on the show who talked about all of these weird things that were in skincare cosmetics, and I forget the name of it, but it's whale poop. Do you know yes. that ingredient? Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's yes. a that's a popular one in fragrances, right? And evidently, yes. it's very expensive, right? It's very expensive ingredient. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. So, there's a lot of weird stuff. So they could say, could they call it cruelty free? And if they're using that kind of, it has to be vegan, right? If it has to be vegan and cruelty free. I think they call it cruelty free. But I know when you make it yourself, and I don't know if everyone makes it themselves or not, or they source it from manufacturers that they have a certificate that it is cruelty free. Because okay. many, many manufacturers should provide that. I think they can call it cruelty free, but they can't call it obviously vegan. Vegan, yeah, so, has to have so no animal products. Many yeah. ingredients. That's why I'm saying some brands call themselves vegan, but I'm like, well, that's not vegan. You have to go and look. Even like cetyl yeah. alcohol, just normal waxes, right? Not bee wax, but normal that you think is not from bees, so it's normal synthetic wax. But a lot of waxes are not synthetic, and they're also coming from some kind of animal. Oh, is that true? Really? Yeah. 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 So. You- have a word synthetic in front of it, which doesn't sound too good, but it has to. So the term wax, not wax, wax, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. (laughs) You like bee wax. Okay, good. That's interesting. Well, I remember, Ron, we went to one of those IV therapy places. We were both under the weather and we were getting vitamin D and vitamin C infusions. I think we got the D shot and the C infusion or whatever. But I said to the lady, oh, is that vegan? You know, I mean, it's a vitamin, but I've, figured I'd better ask. And she's like, I don't know. Gosh, let me check. And she had to go back and find all the, she had to ask the doctor, it was the nurse and they, she didn't know when they had to check. So it's not something a lot of people think about with their medications either, or their supplements. Medication is like all the capsules, right? Yeah. Oh. Gelatin. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that. That's gelatin. What's that made from? Yeah, gelatin. So, and, and not even that, a lot of tablets, because we just did the whole thing on gluten in your medicine. But when you look at the medicine, it's like the heparin, for example, if you're okay, right? Yeah. That's also made from pigs. Pregnant. Or, what is yes. that? Pregnant cow, right? Yeah. And pigs, pigs. Pigs, pigs. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And then the question is can we do something else about it? Because if you are truly vegan, 
you won't necessarily want to take that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But what do you do? Right. So that's yeah. that's like a whole different thing. Of that's med- a whole other show. Come back <laughs> on, and we'll talk about creepy products and supplements. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Actually, that would be an interesting show because there's so much. Oh my god! And like you said, if you don't ask, so it really comes back to knowledge is power. Being an empowered consumer, knowing the questions to ask for, knowing the certifications to look for, knowing what brands to trust. This is the world we live in today. We have to be our own detective. I say it all the time, but for sure. I think it's really important that we're talking about cruelty free, but looping back to the safety of products, can you share some safe products that you recommend to replace the harmful ones? Well, they're actually quite a lot on the market, you know. So obviously I wouldn't I wouldn't advertise my, my own brand, but yeah, yeah, we'll do. It, tell us. It. Yeah, tell us it. but you know, I'm only switched to my own products, my husband and all my friends. And of course we have a lot of customers as we've grown. And it is really because I feel being a pharmacist, I really look at like, okay, is this good for you? You know, can I stand by it and make it and give it? And then we focus really on makeup, fun makeup, but also of course, skincare, mainly for sensitive skin, normal skin, acne, psoriasis, eczema, all kinds of skin. So, and we have customers who are 18 years old, and we have customers who are 85. So nice. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. See, my, my skin is glowing. I'm like, well, uh-huh. that's so great. So it's ah, the best compliment. Wonderful. But I think also when you look at, like, we work with a Think Dirty, you probably heard of it, an app, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I think now more than half of our collection is on their app. Oh, app? awesome. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Let's put that clean. Tell our listeners how that works. They may not know. Yeah, so it's great. So think dirty ad, they basically, they either like, they just go and you can scan an ingredient and say Whole Foods and it will pop up on the Think Dirty app. I know it's a fun name. And then you will see how clean it is. If it is everything below three, it's considered clean. Zero, of course, is the best. Yeah. And if it's everything below three, it's not clean. And unfortunately, you'll see a lot of established brands being eight or nine or 10. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's, of course, something that the customer can decide, okay, I'm well informed. I know I can still buy it or I decide to buy something else. Yeah. I mean, I love working with them because they really, what you do when they work with us, they ask a list of all ingredients and then they vet each ingredient. And not just on toxicity, but also on allergens, on whether it's vegan or not, cruelty-free how ethically it's sourced. So it's kind of all around. So that's, I think, a good source if you want to find uh, skincare or makeup. Yeah. So So if it's under three, it's for me. (laughs) If it's nine, it's not fine. Is that true? Correct. Nice, nice. Did you come Uh, up with (laughs) I did. See, it's amazing. I can twiddle my thumbs too. He's our resident comedian (laughs) poet. Okay. Ron has many talents. I'm going to add a man of many tongues. I'm going to tell Think Dirty to start using it. <laughs> so maybe it's your claim, you need to. Oh, okay. Right. You can take it. You can take it. I've not, I've not trademarked that yet. So. Think Dirty, I'll put a link to that to download that, guys. There's becoming a lot of great tools, whether you have Skin Deep Database at Environmental Working Group. There's Clearia. I don't know if you're familiar with Clearia. We have a great interview with them on our website and the great, um, they're not everywhere yet. They do, I think, Amazon, Walmart, Sephora, and iHerb. So they have a few, but that's great too. And so the tools are there, guys, to help you so that you don't have to be a detective and you don't have to get your PhD to read an ingredient label. But what regulations would you say, Dr. Leah, should be put in place by the FDC to reduce the production of harmful products? Well, I think for start, and I know it will require a lot of manpower, I think just some kind of approval would be great. And approval, not just by me supplying ingredients, uh, mm-hmm. you know, what's in my, in my product, but sending the ingredient in and then possibly testing it. Or FDC could require you present all the tests as many other brands or many other clean beauty websites do, like submit all of this. And then we can consider you and deem you safe or approved. Mm -hmm. But I know that utopia, right? That's the best scenario in maybe 50 years. Hopefully that everything you see OTC over the counter, right? That will be also kind of stamped by FDA saying, this is good. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, just don't even be there. Because I don't think we need so many 
dirty brands, I would yeah. say, dirty ingredients. So that will be ideal. I think halfway would be that FDC will require FDA to submit a list of ingredients and then review it and say, yes, go ahead. Mm-hmm. I not necessarily like we approved it, but we deem it safe enough mm-hmm. according to everything we know now. But that's yeah. still not happening. So I think that will wow. be a good halfway. And again, submit all the certifications. Like there are so many certifications or analysis you can do. Like even if you claim that you don't have nuts, you can go, there are so many labs, mm-hmm. send your sample of your product and they will analyze for a possible concentration of specific nuts in the yeah. product. That's all on the manufacturer, the brand to do that. That's all. Yes. Yeah. And I know, of course, it will require, again, more funds especially if it's a young starting brand, where do you get those funds? So I think that all considering it just, it is a little bit harder to do this, but I think maybe there are some subsidies that are possible for the new brands. And I think that kind of will be a good halfway. Yeah, that's great. Maybe the FDA could do like a rating, even if it was just a three, good, better, best, or, you know, something like bad, better, best, where they got some kind of rating that they had to put like just a number on their bottle, like a one, two or three, something really simple where people could look and go right away. Oh, this is a toxic or this is middle of the road, or this one's really clean. It's shocking to me how many self-placing industries there are. And there's so many, it blows my mind. And then we have greenwashing, right? We have the problem of greenwashing. So because brands who know their ingredients aren't clean, want you to buy their products, they will use terms and colors and icons, maybe leaves or green or things like that to make you what's that or natural, right? The word natural is not regulated. I mean, even non toxics not regulated. These aren't regulated by any industry. So, you know, sustainable, all of that, that doesn't really mean anything. So when you're the consumer buying it, it doesn't mean anything. So I would say look for those third party certifications as a good rule of thumb, or you know, brands that you know, right? brands that you know have proven track record that show you the ingredients, that show you those test results that reveal and don't have anything to hide. They're generally going to be good brands until they sell to a big, huge company and then the company. <laughs> yes, that's, that's <laughs> we've it. seen that happen. I won't yeah. say who. Yeah, we've yeah. seen that happen. But, but I love what you said. I think the transparency and being ethical is very important, you know? That's why I always say, if you see a brand or you got a test from someone, tester, you love it, write to the customer service. If they reply to you and it's satisfactory, then you know you can trust them. If there is washy-washy or they don't reply, then you know it's just something that's... So I always say that trust, building trust and having transparency about everything, even the concentration that people coming and saying, oh, I don't like this ingredient. But I said, yes, that's true. Too much water is bad. Too much of this is bad. This is such a small concentration and I give them what it is and we have a dialogue about it. So they feel safe about it. And that's very important. Yeah, right. It's a two-way street because the brands improve too when they learn things from the customers. And now with social media, I mean, there's such a connection between brands and customers like we've never seen before. So it's not like six degrees of separation, like in the old days where you couldn't contact a company, like now you really can. And so I think that that's really good advice. Thank you for sharing that. Well, Dr. Leah, thank you so much for being with us today. Is there anything you want to leave our listeners with? Well, number one, thank you so much for having me. It was really so much fun. And also thank you for doing what you do. It's so important. I think health education is just on any front, whether it's food or skincare or everything in our environment is extremely important. So I just want to say thank you for everything you guys do and thank you for having me here. Oh, thank you. This was a treat. And thank you for creating a line of skincare that's gluten-free, vegan, hypoallergenic, and medically clean. And by offering solutions to safer skincare for everyone that focuses on those with gluten sensitivities, allergies, autoimmune conditions, and sensitive skin with natural ingredients and no parabens or phthalates. That's (laughs) (laughs) cruelty-free. Well, friends, if you'd like to learn more about EpiLinks by Dr. Leah and their wide array of products, head now to epilinks.com. And that's E-P-I-L-Y-N-X to shop for makeup, skincare, and body care for women. 
kids and men. By the way, the link will be down in the show notes in case you missed it here. And also, stay tuned next week, friends, and get ready to up-level your health. See you then. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. This episode of the Healthy Home Hacks podcast has ended, but be sure to subscribe for more healthy living strategies and tactics to help you create the healthy home you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best content. See you on the next episode.